With the optional long-range battery, Ford's F-150 Lightning has 563 horsepower and 775 pound-feet of torque. That is enough to get this full-size truck from 0 to 60 miles per hour in the mid-four-second range, on pavement at least. Today, we're going to see how this rig handles less than ideal conditions. Ford invited us to Michigan's remote and frigid Upper Peninsula to get some exclusive passenger seat time in this new truck. So let's fire up those butt warmers and see what it can do. Yes, you heard me correctly. I said passenger seat time. Ford didn't let me drive the Lightning last spring when we got our first look at the battery powered truck. And I'm barred from the captain's chair again today. But what can you do? I mean, I tried bribing them but they wouldn't take loose change or even a coupon to Little Caesars. Today, we're going to see how well the Lightning handles snow and ice. We'll also find out if it can get sideways and determine how freezing temperatures impact driving range, a very important concern with electric vehicles. This is Cameron Dillon. He's a powertrain calibration engineer at Ford, and he's going to show us what this new F-150 Lightning can do. So what are you going to demonstrate here? So we're out here on a groomed snow field. And I'm specifically going to highlight the powertrain tuning and mm. the efforts we've done to make the, this truck with the electric powertrain very stable and intuitive on these snow and ice surfaces. Gotcha. But just to start, so as we turn or as we're doing anything out here, the powertrain is always adjusting your torque between the front and rear to optimize for the, for the maneuver or the drive experience. Mm -hmm. And so what we can do is to really showcase that I'm going to use the throttle, the pedal, to slip some wheels and spin us around here. And then keeping my foot constant, I'm going to roll out, roll back in with the, with the steering wheel. Mm -hmm. And so what we're doing to change the response of the vehicle is strictly shifting the power from the front and the rear to change how the, how the vehicle's behaving. Gotcha. What have you done to keep this truck stable? in winter conditions because obviously you don't want to be doing this sort of these sort of maneuvers out on the a public street. Absolutely, and that's a great question. Uh, I laugh because my brother, he always tells people that for my job I just come up north and drift cars around, <laughs> okay. right? And that's kind and of what you're doing. Right? So there's some truth to that for sure. Yeah. But I think that the key to it is is that even though we're up here and we're doing stuff, stuff that's very loose and you may not see that on a public road like you mentioned, mm -hmm. the heart of it all is that these controls are active all the time. So what we do up here is we can really expose the maximum use case for these controls where it's really needed and where it really can be tuned when we have our computers hooked up to these trucks. We can change the software and say, I didn't get enough turn in there. I didn't have enough control there. How can I make that better? Mm -hmm. And so that's where a lot of our time is spent and controlling these trucks to make sure that the end product is very intuitive mm -hmm. and that power shift is enabling the customer to get the power of the truck in a way that they can use it to do what they want and what they're telling the truck to do with the pedal and the steering wheel. Mm -hmm. Of course, the Lightning is not Ford's first modern electric vehicle. The controversial yet surprisingly popular Mustang Mach-E went on sale about a year ago. Engineers learned a lot while developing that SUV, lessons that were applied to this battery-powered F-150. The Mach-E has a all-wheel drive variant that also has the front and rear motors. Mm -hmm. And for the GT Mach-E, it has a very powerful front motor that matches the rear, similar to what we're driving with the truck. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the lessons that we learned putting that Mustang through the snow and ice trials and testing similar to what we're showcasing today taught us a lot of lessons about how we could really optimize the power of the vehicle and where to put it when we need it to do certain maneuvers mm -hmm. or respond in a certain way. So we were able to carry all of those lessons learned into this truck and, you know, I could hook up a trailer, I could tow that trailer here, I could put some payload in the back and do all of these truck things. But we can also come out here on this snow field and using a lot of what we pulled from the Mustang Dynamics and these independent axle motors, mm -hmm. we can also get out here and have a very smooth, intuitive and very fun mm -hmm. experience, you know, pirouetting this truck around. I, I would love to have this as my backyard, I'll tell you. This oh, would yeah. be amazing. <laughs> Absolutely. Even though it's way the hell up north, this would be awesome. 
The Lightning may share more than a few strands of DNA with the Mach-E, but it's still a truck, so it's got to be as tough as gristle. And even though this rig is electric, there should be no sacrifices in durability or longevity. Well, we've got some mismatched door handles, a little bit of tape residue. The charging port door has Velcro on it. I'd say this rig is just about ready for the showroom floor, don't you think? Well, in all seriousness, this is a test mule, and engineers have absolutely put it through the ringer. This particular truck joined the fleet in about March of 2020, and it has thousands of hours of abusive testing on it. They have towed up mountains with this thing. They've driven it in the Arizona desert in triple digit heat. It's also been to Alaska where it gets even colder than it does here in northern Michigan. And of course, engineers are doing all of that to ensure that the electric F-150 Lightning is just as durable as other F-Series trucks. Not surprisingly, the Lightning is rock solid in harsh winter conditions. The structure feels as stiff as a granite countertop, and thanks to its fancy independent rear suspension, the back end doesn't shimmy when hitting bumps. Oh, and as you can clearly see, this truck drifts with ease. That immediate torque will get you sideways in a heartbeat, but this pickup is also extremely balanced and stable, whether you're pretending to be a getaway driver or just running errands around town. All right, we are on the handling course right now, and this is Joel Bloch. He's a vehicle integration engineer at Ford, and he's sort of demonstrating how the Lightning behaves a little bit more on civilian roads. So how does the truck feel to drive? The truck feels very planted. You feel very in control, um, especially on low mu surfaces. It's, I think customers will notice a difference compared to their gas. If they're coming from a gas F-150, um, you know, switching to Ford Auto or something on your F-150 gas product versus the 4x4 system that this vehicle is controlling the front and the rear motors, it it just feels very different. Mm -hmm. I think you definitely feel the fact that the vehicle is a little heavier than a gas F-150 is today. Uh, but that weight just feels very controlled and planted as you're going around turns, um, no matter what the surface is. So we're out here. It's the dead of winter. We're in northern Michigan. This is an electric truck. A lot of customers are going to have concerns about range. Well, how far can they drive with a full charge? What happens to the battery capacity in sub-zero conditions? Is there a, I, I know this is probably an unanswerable question, but is there like a general guideline, a 10%, a 20% reduction that people can generally use as a rule of thumb? Yeah, I think something that all automakers are gonna struggle with is really publishing a value on that. Um, we do know that based on the physics of the battery pack, you're going to experience a degraded range number in cold ambient conditions. Mm -hmm. um, the really big thing that we're focusing on is educating customers on how they can improve that. Um, if you're plugging in at your home at night, we encourage people to use the preconditioning for a departure time. Mm -hmm. um, always plugging on level two if you can uh, to try and make your battery and bring it up to temperature before you're planning to go somewhere. Beyond things like battery preconditioning, the Lightning is also super smart about how it estimates range. The truck takes into account how you're currently driving as well as your driving history. And if you frequently tow, you can also set up a trailer profile in the infotainment system. Over time, the vehicle learns the efficiency of that trailer to deliver the most accurate range estimates possible. Because remember, dragging a small rowboat is totally different than towing a fully loaded camper. The Lightning is essentially an F-150 with a battery pack, some electric motors, and a few other tweaks. Ford chose to modify an existing product instead of creating something from scratch, a decision that sped up vehicle development. In comparison, Rivian's R1T, as well as the GMC Hummer EV pickup, are built on dedicated platforms, something that could give them an advantage over Ford. But are engineers worried these rival models will be better optimized than the Lightning? No, I think using our proven capability of the F-Series lineup honestly gives us more credit than a lot of the ground up EV mm. manufacturers. The F-150 manufacturing is really what plays into a lot of the development time and utilizing a lot of carryover common processes from our what we've learned in the past from previous F-150 launches is really what allows us to exped expedite our launch window and get trucks to customers sooner. Mm -hmm. In terms of the competitive advantage, we're going to learn over time what our customers like and don't like with electric pickup trucks. 
and we'll be able to hopefully manage a lot of the updates via software and then the hardware updates we'll be able to make and cycle as required mm -hmm. or deemed necessary. Do you think customers will like it? They're going to get them in their hands here pretty soon. I, I'm, I personally am super excited to get these trucks out into customer hands and I think they're going to absolutely love them. Um, I can't wait to get customer feedback on you know, some of the things that we pay attention to in the fine details and mm -hmm. then always wanting to understand what customers wish we would have done better um, well, and hopefully can try to improve over time with our OTA capability. So what did we learn today? Well, other than that, I need some heated long johns and dog sled might be nice. The Lightning here is a capable all-electric pickup truck, one that builds on the standard F-150's general excellence. I think customers are really going to love that potent all-electric drivetrain, and the good news is they're not going to have to wait too long to get into one of these rigs. The first Lightning deliveries are scheduled to start this spring.